just how much I love I've heard the mermaid singing and how I re-watched it again. I'd always remembered it, always remembered this poster too. I love the poster and I love that you made the poster. Um, but I was Skyping people who perform as mermaids. And then when I finally got around to watching the film, which was in my head somehow, I was surprised to find there were no mermaids in it. And yet it's the work that perhaps resonated most deeply with me and, yeah. and touched my own story. And that gets back to this original conversation we had where you said the idea of someone possessed with the song of mermaids in her heart was moving to me. I didn't make any connections to siren calls. I just thought of it as something unbearably beautiful. You can hear it, but you can't reflect it back. Um, and Polly's Terrible. the hero. Do you, do you love the what creator? in the film, like po Polly's kind of the heroine of the film, isn't she, you know? Uh -huh. What, can I ask you what, why you think it, it touched you so? I, yeah, okay. I, I always have a big association to a redhead. So I, I think the fact that her hair is red is significant. I know that sounds really stupid because she brings so much to that performance. And I've, I've watched a documentary about the film earlier um, today. And she's saying every line she's saying is a line you wrote, yet she really inhabits, inhabits the role. And I think it's because she's in the art world. And when I watched it, I, you know, I went to art school many years ago, Patricia. I've ended up a writer and, and an art writer. So somehow watching all the characters play out these roles in and around the art world um, is very interesting to me, but also very dear to me because whatever propels us into that world, which is often depicted on film as being quite so sophisticated, and it, and it is in the, you know, in the world of the curator and her character, um, is propelled by this fundamental innocence to um, hear the mermaids calling. Yeah, I definitely, um feel like what initially lures people into the act of creation um, is, is, is very pure and very beautiful. I find that sometimes that purity um, is, it, it, is, it is met by a kind of a hardness when, when it gets into the business of art. Also the, the, the you know, the, the, the fundamental question of uh, is it enough to just want to do it, to love to do it, to do it with an open heart? Um, and can people judge that? Can people judge hearts? Can people judge honest expressions? Um, you know, I, I do believe that some work is good and some work isn't. The, 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 the film itself comes from a, a much more uh, subjective um uh, approach to art, you know, it comes from a place that says, doesn't matter, doesn't matter where you think it's good or not good. It's just, it, it just is. And the, the, the wish to make it is enough. But, but then on a very personal level, I just had each of the characters represent sides of myself and then put, and that, that were at odds with each other, you know, um, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the kind of uncomplicated artist who just wants to play in the sandbox, just love to make something and see something that pleases them, doesn't need to analyze it. The other one that is, you know, the, the curator who, who mm. is just judging it always and knows that they'll never make, uh, that I'll never make, reach my own standards. And then uh, the, the Mary Joseph part, mm. who is like kind of a little bit sickened by the act of self-promotion and repeating yourself in interviews and going around trotting about how special you are um like that that um that the, the, those three personas that inhabit me anyway and probably a lot of filmmakers and artists of different kinds um i i just thought that that was rich material like rich and complicated and messy and it's fun. <laughs> There's that very funny shrewd scene with the male art critic um, and you know I understood you got given a bit of well you know just 
there were questions around whether that scripting was realistic, you know, the international art language that they were speaking. And um, I, I guess I had it a was. Mind. Yeah, I know it is because I'm, I <laughs> am in and around that world. So I fully understand that. <laughs> that it I is pushed true. it over the edge. I pushed it over the edge here and there, like to, 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 to make it, you know, fully, um, you know, to, to, to tip my hand that it was satirical. It was making fun, but I just, I really didn't want to, it's a hard thing. I didn't, I didn't want to make fun of uh, the, you know, application of the analytical side of ourselves to art. Cause I think that's a really important process. And I think that, um, you know, the, it, 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 maybe the maker doesn't always have that language and that capacity to put it in the historical context and cultural context, but it's a really, it, it, you know, important um, part of the whole, uh, you know, uh, significance of art in our in our lives. I, I think, um, I, so I wanted to poke fun a little bit because, because the film was from Polly's point of view. So it was a quite a naive point of view, right? So, but for instance, when Polly is conducting a symphony, she's not conducting an obscure, you know, Josquin de Preply sort of like she's mm. she's doing she's doing Beethoven's Fifth, you know, mm. something that would have touched her world. So I needed to have that the language and the effect of that language um, be from her perspective and from her perspective it's gobbledygook you know <laughs> and she's trying desperately to kind of understand it because she wants in on this world because it's so sexy and so lovely and she knows there's something at the heart of it but she can't quite grasp it um so the yeah curator was, is, was... The, the curator is very sexy you know the curator <laughs> does have that smoldering you know quiet complicated sexuality you know that draws you in but you know and while we were shooting she said oh what i would give to have polly's role you know oh, she wow. knew that that's, that's where your heart would go she she knew that that was who who we would feel for she knew enough to to, to know that 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 sophistication isn't what necessarily draws an audience you know or draws it draws sympathy and love yeah yeah, I understand that. Tell me about the botched mermaid costume because I was really interested <laughs> about the fact that you did try to visualize it, but you made this film on a very small budget that became a phenomenal success and had a 10 minute standing ovation at Cannes. So I just suddenly had the idea, what if you just she when she's looking out over the over the, you know, Lake Ontario, she just sees just a just you you're not even sure you see it. I love kind of having something significant just thrown away. Um, just see a tail slipping into the mm. into the into the sea, you know. So uh, I had hired someone to do uh, special um, you know effects and um, so she was going to make she said, I can make, I can do that and I'll wear a, a, a costume and it'll be a you know like a, I'll, I'll wear I'll have a kind of a fin up to here and then I'll go out and swim out there and then go up and, on the day I'm looking through the camera and I'm seeing like the, the it's bending in half, you know, like looking as plastic and sad as possible. She's flailing about, it's really cold. It's in October in Canada. It's like, she's really suffering out there. And, you know, I just, I would look through and it's like, oh, I'm embarrassed. I couldn't even call roll. Cause I just, I thought, I don't even want any of this on film. It's so, so embarrassing. So we just cut it and we, we stuck with hearing the mermaids singing rather than seeing them. I love that that's the peak experience though. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, the, no. and mermaids are associated with sound and voice historically. So I think it has all of these, um, you know, subtle, almost subliminal ways that, that the theme speaks to you. I, when we, I've got a, re, I've got a lot of really good gems from our first conversation, and one of them was that the mermaids in the title, you know, raised it to a mythic level in a subtle way. It was just, it was late in the game where I, I'd written it, and I was already well on the road to making it, and mm. it suddenly dawned on me that this is a J. Alfred Prufrock character, mm. and that, you know, that had, that was one of my favorite poems, and 
a great and poem. In school, um, I, 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 I could quote it at length at the time. I'd written parts of it on bathroom walls. Like it was really, it, it mattered a lot to me. And I realize now that that was just kind of a person that kind of stood in for my um, my own you know, need for belonging and, 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 and lack of an obvious place to belong. Um, and uh, so I just scoured that poem for um, the, the line that would catch it, um, catch that, that sensation. And it was a real torture for me because I, you know, after I made my first half hour film, I had a bad review for it. And I thought, oh my God, am I strong enough to do this? Is it, is, is just wanting to do it enough of a reason to yeah. do it? Like, what if you know that you're not, you're just never going to reflect back those, those feelings you have and that's that, that, in that, that, that glorious sensation of what you want to make. And, um, and it can, do you just do it anyway? And this was my, yeah, just do it anyway. Evaluations we have for art are so uh, time-based and so um, fashion-based and, 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 and temporary and really reflect um, the kind of collective emotions of the time. You could be before, you could be after, or you could be of the moment. And it's very rare that you're of the moment. If you are of the moment, you'll be rewarded. If you're just a few seconds before or a few seconds later, then you, no one's gonna give a shit. You're gonna be you know, considered a failure. <laughs> so interesting. One of the things that we ended our conversation with last time, which um, you know, you were telling me you'd been walking along a beach somewhere with an actress and she said afterwards, oh, that was a professional mermaid who we were talking to. And you were like, well, what was that? And then we got on to, you know, the popularity of mermaids in popular culture and a similar conversation where you said, I often think things become popular because the collective consciousness is ruminating on something. And I thought she's got it, like that's it. That's somehow, that's one of the answers I've been searching for. I agree that that somehow the, the collective overmind, as you said, wants to hear certain stories and is ready for them and others fail to find their moment. And I think like, you know, at the moment that I made, I've heard the mermaid singing, the people were ready to hear uh, something from a woman, mm. you know? I think that that was, they didn't know they were looking for that, but then mm. when they saw, oh, uh, look at that, a female filmmaker, because that was a very rare event in those days. Mm. Um, and also something with, you know, like I had a guy come up to me and can say three female characters and there's no guys to speak of and it works. Like <laughs> shocked, shocked beyond shocked that you could make a movie that didn't have guys in the center of it. <laughs> also to come from a kind of non-sexy place like Toronto, Canada at the time. And I think we've had, you know, a few more films coming from there, but to have something come from, there and then also to have like you know a kind of a, a, a you know a lesbian angle mm. that um that that wasn't a tragedy and that didn't end mm. in you know someone's suicide or 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 a cautionary tale um with society destroying them somehow and, and ending up in the gutter somewhere like it like that i think there was a there was a wish to hear that um just like and right now i feel like you know, there's many other things that people want to hear, but I think that our group mind is mm. figuring out gender, mm, you know, the, the trans experience and like, what is, what is the, the binary? Isn't, isn't that basic to humanity or is that something that can change mm. and meld? And, and is there a continuum? I think that those questions are gigantic in the, mm. um, and also what, is neurotypical and you know and neurodiverse sort of how, um, how, how do we um, incorporate you know profoundly different ways of thinking you know all of those people throughout society that are we're just called th throughout history that were just called uh, weird <laughs> or mm. odd or you know kind of really smart but strange um, like who who are they and how can we um, 
create a respectful space for for them now. Um, that's, I think, a, a part of our, our problem. <laughs> mm. You know, like, I don't even mean problem, but I mean that the current artistic challenge is, is that. I didn't realize I was doing anything um, kind of contemporary at the time. And I wasn't. I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this is a very tiny film that had, a you know, a small, small um, audience compared to, you know, the big box office pieces that reaffirm the status quo. The big ones are basically reaffirming the status quo. They're reaffirming it so completely that you don't even see that there's a message. And that's when you're gonna have a giant hit, when it doesn't feel like there's any message at all because it's actually wearing the same colors as the wallpaper. When it feels messagey, that probably means that it's either a little bit before or behind the, the status quo. They're very interesting points to reflect on. Well, I am <laughs> grateful for your film and I am so amazed and grateful to speak to you. Um, it will be a treat for the audience to see the film, but also to have some observations from, from you yourself before it. And um, thank you for, thank you for still, you know, making time to engage with someone who's essentially like Polly, but not quite as cute. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for uh it's really it's it's moving to me that you want to hear from me after all these years 